Hi, it's Will from StormTheCastle.com, and here on YouTube, you know me as Epic Fantasy. And this is my latest tutorial. This is how to do Soul Edge from Soul Calibur. Crazy one. Crazy product. Look, and even the eyeball even moves. Can you see that? Right? <laughs> I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail with this because it's a lot of work. A few basic supplies, paper mache, foam, uh, a wooden dowel or a boom, a boom handle or even a rake handle. Um, a little bit about the eyeball. And, uh, well, hey, came out pretty good. Let's take a better look. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. So, um, thanks for watching my videos. Thanks for subscribing if you're a subscriber. Um, if you're not a subscriber, hit that button. I always got creative, fun, interesting projects, all kinds of subjects. Look through some of my videos. You can see I got all kinds of stuff. Some 600 odd videos and all, covering all kinds of different subjects. Uh, give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs down. Leave a comment. I read all comments. Leave me a suggestion for a project. I read them and sometimes I will do them. So let's, let's do the introduction and then let's do how to make Soul Edge from Soul Calibur. Thank you. Ah. Diorama's origami, catapults and treasure chase, telescopes, terrariums, bonsai trees and paper games, swords and shields and real blocks, with model boxes, animation. I teach you how to feel creation. StormTheCastle.com. Let's make something. Okay, the first thing we did was laid out uh, several sheets, big sheets of paper and taped them together. The size of our sword, which is about six feet. And then we sketched out the shape of it, the profile of it. And cut that out. Now we have a template. So we transferred that template over to a big piece of cardboard. And we didn't have a piece big enough, so we taped together several pieces. It doesn't really matter. And then cut that out. So now let's get to shaping the sword. We used great stuff and actually did two layers to make it even thicker. But spread out an even coat like that. And then once it dries, you spread on another coat to make it even thicker if you prefer it. But it looks pretty good. It's actually pretty light and pretty strong. It takes a while to dry, though. You're going to have to let it sit overnight. And then we did some in, um, initial shaping with a serrated knife, which actually works pretty good for this. We will do more shaping later once we do the other side of the sword. Because this is only one side. See, but it's starting to look pretty good, right? And see those holes there? You can fill those in with great stuff if you want. You can fill those in. But it doesn't matter too much because we're going to paper mache it. So what we've done is we flipped it over, did another, did a layer of, two layers of great stuff on this side, and then did the same thing, started to shape the sword. And I have a lot of fun with this. This is like, you know, this is like easy sculpting. See, that side is almost done. The other side we had just started working on. And it's kind of fun to work with this stuff. It's... Instead of working with stone in the sculpture, you work with uh, great stuff. It's neat. So continue with the shaping. Get the sword the way we want it, pretty much. You know, look at pictures of it so you get a good sense for what it looks like and the shape of it. And then once you got it pretty close, you can sand it down to smooth it out. And add any details at this point that you want to show up. Yeah, so it actually does have various little chinks taken out of it and um, serrations and stuff like that. So let's prep it for paper mache. That means um, coating the whole thing with masking tape. Looks good. And left a spot there for the eyeball. See, no masking tape in that big square section where the eyeball is going to go. Let's add the handle, which is a rake handle. And um, we ground it down so it had a point on it to make it easy to get to insert into the sword. And the butt and pommel of the handle are kind of built up, so we wrapped paper around it and duct tape to make that more of a handle like that. 
and then some plastic cloth to uh, give it shape, body, and nice texture, a nice surface. I mean, you can do paper mache, but it won't last as long if you handle it a lot. So now let's paper mache the sword. Strips of newspaper and a paper mache mix, which is just flour, water, and salt. Even amounts of flour and water. Two cups and two cups. And then paper mache the whole thing, and we did two layers of it. Once this layer dried, the whole thing. And um, once it dried, we did a second layer. And once the second layer is dry, sand it smooth. So you can prime it now or you can prime it later with a white paint. Because I showed some of this process, I think it wasn't, you don't see it white painted. That's quite all right. Prime it when you're ready to prime it. So let's make the eyeball. You're probably looking forward to this. Pull up a balloon the size that you want of your eyeball and paper mache it with at least two coats. So it's nice and strong. You don't want it to crumple on you. Uh, once it's dry, let's um, seal it with Mod Podge. Makes it even stronger. And then paint it. And the paint is actually half Mod Podge and half white paint, which makes it even stronger and actually gives it a nice, um, kind of a little bit of a glisten to it. If that's a good word, glisten. But I will show you how to make this eyeball all right, so let's do the iris and the pupil. Um, we printed one up. Darken the back side of it because it's going to show through. And then this is important. Spray it with a sealant like this because that gives it a certain amount of like translucence and a wetness. It kind of um, soaks through the paper, and then the iris and the, particularly the pupil get to be uh, translucent. It's kind of nice. It's a nice step to do. Cut it out and then put slits in it because the slits do two things. You know, it's kind of like the iris has like slits in it, but also will fit on the the, the sphere of the, the the eyeball better without wrinkling. And then uh, glue it on and mod podge it on. So that's the eyeball. It's actually pretty easy and it comes out really good. Well, a couple more details I'll show you. So we paint some bloodshot veins on it. It's a nice detail. And then seal it with a very high gloss, super high shine sealant if you got one. We're using Mod Podge, high shine. Um, so when it's dry, it actually still looks wet, like an eyeball would. <laughs> now, let's install it. So mark out a hole, dig out that hole. Make sure you have plenty of room there. You don't want it to get stuck. We had trouble. We had to make the hole. Then we made it a little bit bigger. We made it a little bit bigger. So it's. It, it rotates smoothly inside that, inside there. Then tape it up. And let's install the mechanisms so it'll work. There are actually two parts to this. There's a pivot like this. I drilled a hole through it, and then we put a, a little bra a brass rod through there, or you can use a dowel. And that's the pivot point that the eyeball will pivot on back and forth, like... And then there's the um, activating wire. So that comes in from near the handle, like this. And that's what pushes and pulls the eyeball so it rotates. And how we did that was with some wire. Put a hoop on the eyeball at the bottom put some wire on it, and then feed that wire through the sheath. You know, you could work out some kind of thing with this. But it, it's got to be reasonably strong so it can also push the eyeball and pull the eyeball. Uh, you know what I mean? You might be able to use like a, a thin piece of, uh, you know, something like piano wire or something like that. And then feed that inside like this. And then you... Uh, Put the hinging pivot through it, the hinging dowel. And we'll take a look at that. 
See the eyeball just takes this project from making a sword to a little bit something. Else. See? See the hinging dowel there on the right? Now you can push and pull it and it'll rotate the eyeball. Very good. A little bit of detail work. We kept at that. So let's make the eyeball look even better like it's part of the sword. And we did that with some crumpled um, newspaper to build it up like the orbital socket around the eye. And some cereal box cardboard like this. Taped it up and then paper mache it. Oh, and notice that the eyeball has a plastic bag over it to protect it. While we're paper mache and while we're painting it, we don't want to ruin that eyeball, it's too nice. So go ahead and paper mache it. Oh, and notice the uh, eye, around the eye there is hot glue that adds some um, texture to it. See, it adds a, the lip around the eyelid. And that's it. It is now integrated into the sword. Prime it. And we're getting ready to finish off this sword. Black paint around the eye. Just like that, like he has a black eye or something. And let's paint it. A base coat of silver because it is a sword, right? Hey, listen, it's um almost 12 minutes into this video. Thanks for watching this far. Hey, if you want to make this sword, you go right ahead and make it. Send me a picture. You know, if it doesn't come out that good, so what? You yeah, had fun doing it. Do the best you can. Try another one. You know, you'll get better at it. And then some detail paint. And now let's do what you're waiting for, the blood and guts. Eee, the bio, it is a bio sword. That is more great stuff. And you can tinker with this. There's different kinds of great stuff. And you can control the flow, make thicker and thinner veins and blood flows. And, you know, just go crazy with it. Why not? Nobody will criticize it. Looks good. Yay, we're almost done. Final painting and this thing is done. It actually takes a while to do this project simply because of all the drying. Like for example, um, <clears throat> you spray the, the, you bulk out the sword with great stuff to make the shape of the sword, you gotta let it all dry. You do another layer, layer you gotta let it dry. You paint it, you gotta let it dry. You paper mache it, you gotta let it dry. Then you do great stuff, you gotta let it dry. And you know, so it takes, that's what takes the most time. So this isn't a project you do in one afternoon. So now have fun with the colors. And we actually use several different shades of red. Makes a big difference. So there's some brown, see the cherry red, there's lots of red. And then finally there's a little bit of black and more red. And to make it look really bio here, I'll show you a little bit more before we cover that. <clears throat> and we actually did this process a couple of times to get it right, get a real feel for it. So there you go. See how it looks? Wow, it's really crazy. The great stuff is amazing what that does. You know, they never thought, it's a home improvement product, never thought you'd be using it for this. So now a crystal clear enamel, something that's very shiny but clear, will to seal it all up and finish it and you're done. What happens is when that dries, it still looks wet, but it's dry. That's what the crystal clear enamel does. I use this stuff a lot. So there you go. Soul Edge from Soul Calibur. Am I a nightmare? And the eyeball works. Ready for, I don't know, whatever you want to do with it. Cosplay, Halloween, whatever. Battle. <laughs> All right. Um, thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. Not a subscriber. Lots more projects coming. Um, here, here's a couple more. There's Voldo's Qatars from Soul Calibur. Two, I think, believe. And then down below is how to make a gauntlet with craft foam and it actually shaped well. Thank you.